You're listening to the Crew Book Club Podcast, the show that challenged you to change your mindset through hearing about dope books. Thanks for hanging with the crew to get advice, ask questions, and gain knowledge with me, your host, Sade Hill. What up, crew? What's good? Welcome to another episode of the Crew Book Club Podcast. It's your girl, and y'all, we on episode 54. Oh, every Monday this year, I've been hitting you with the episode. Our one-year anniversary of the podcast is coming up January 3rd, and I am super hyped about that. You know, 2023 about to be on and popping. I'm already living in 2023. Mine already there. Events already being posted for 2023. Things are popping and more things are coming for the crew in person and virtually. I am getting ready. I am ready and things are already in the works for 2023. So let's get into it. This particular episode is the chapters 21 and 22 of Bamboozled by Jesus. You know, oh wait, back it on up. First and foremost, how are you guys doing today? Right now, in this moment, how are you doing it? Whether you're listening to this podcast 10 years from now, how are you doing right now in this moment? Okay, a lot of times we are always thinking so far in the future and so far back in the past that we don't have time to be okay with what's happening in the in the in between. <laughs> I was watching a sermon um, by TD Jakes about that a few weeks ago, and then I list I heard it on a podcast again, and I was just like, "That is so true." So focus on how you're feeling right now, and know that that's not going to be always how you feel if you're not feeling good and feeling great. And if you're feeling good and feeling great, there might come a time where you're not feeling so so good or great. Just know there's a lesson in everything okay so feel your feels but don't sit in that too long you understand what i'm saying learn how you can move forward and then also do things like listen to a podcast that's gonna make you feel better music all of that do those things and focus on that and then that way you can pull yourself out of your rut all right okay so we're not even gonna wait so long because there's so much to deep dive into into this episode and i don't want to rush it so let's get into it our first segment of the show is what, what? <laughs> I want to give you the advice already. What would the crew do? But first we're going to start off with who going to check me, boo? God is. He is always checking us because we would deserve a good chizek because it keeps us in check. <laughs> okay. Listen, this came to me after I had already finished the outline. The outline was done and I was just like, dang, what could I use to check me? Because when I get on here, I want it to be something that really hit. So I go and I open up my prayers and promises for a woman. And as soon as I went on to the next day, it said delight. And the scripture that hit was Matthew chapter 5, 16. It says, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your father in heaven. So you might be doing all the good deeds in the world and prayerfully they're from God and you have good intent. And I always say to God when I'm about to speak at the mastermind or the meet and greet or before I get on this pod, I say, you know, God, even during the day, whatever it is, I write in my journal, I say, Lord, use me how you see fit. Right. And when people see me, they see you. All right. And when I speak, let your words come out and not and not mine. Because if I allow myself to activate and move, whew, y'all will be getting a different, um, different, <laughs> different experience. So I have to practice daily based on what I respond and move on how God needs me to move. So I'll say, you know, subject my flesh and let my spirit shine through. And when they see me, they see you. And in that there's a small passage on the other side in a prompt question. And this is a sentence that propped out to me that checked me. But it was the significance you give me by caring so deeply inspires me to live a life of greater meaning. Your delight in me is unexplainable. And I am so grateful. Like <laughs> there are times where you, I know I struggle with this. I don't know if you do, but you feel like my significance isn't big in this world. How I'm impacting people is nothing compared to what some people are doing, which I'm not comparing. I'm just saying. And I have to appreciate what I'm doing on my level. But also, 
Not even from the worldly perspective. But when I reread it, I was just like, no, 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 no. Is this talking about him? So this can apply to any, this can apply to Oprah. This can apply to the Obama, President Obama. This can apply to anybody because nothing, we're so insignificant to what, who, who and what God is and does. Okay, so no matter how famous you are, no matter how big you are, no matter even how small you think you are, you're big to God. Okay, and your light can shine bright at your job. Your light can shine bright in any transaction you're involved in. Like I've always said before, like no matter where you where you're at, we talked about this last episode, you can touch anybody. You can be the cashier that touches somebody. You can be the person in the hospital that touches somebody on a spiritual level, but allow God to guide you and you be his light and your light will shine bright. But just know that it's God and not you. All right. So yeah, the significance you give me by caring so deeply inspires me to live a life of greater meaning. Your delight in me is unexplainable and I am grateful. Mm. And the prompt question was, how hard is it for you to fathom God's incredible delight in you? My response was, it's not as hard as it used to be. I find that God delights in me with ease. And that's, you know why I feel that way? Because I had to put in the work with my personal relationship with God. So if you're having a trouble fathom, fathoming how important you are to God, that's an indication you need to spend time with him. Okay? All right, that was a who gon' check me boo. God is, he is always checking us. All right, so let's get into some crew love. <laughs> we go from one love to another. All right, <laughs> but I never want your love to be greater than the crew that it is for God. First, the crew love is you can do right now while you're listening to me. Go ahead and follow. And if you're watching on YouTube, subscribe so you will never ever miss an episode. And also, give it five stars. You know what I'm saying? If you're on Apple, you can give five stars on Spotify as well. And another exclusive thing you can do on Apple is leave a review. Leave your girl a review. I would love to share here on the pod. All right? And follow us on social media. We are on Fanbase. We are on TikTok. And we are also on Instagram at The Crew Book Club. And also on YouTube, the cool thing about YouTube is you can literally watch the video and see how fly I am. And today I'm representing my alma mater, fam you. Okay, well, we strike, strike and strike again. Holla at the HBCU, the best in the land. (laughs) You hear me? All right. And so those are ways that you can show some crew love. And you can also visit our website to get access to everything at thecrewbookclub.com. And you can subscribe there. We have some stuff coming soon. I'm super excited about that. All right. No further ado. Let's get into chapter 21 and 22. Can't wear a crown with your head down. And Whew, your haters gonna be your elevators. Can I get an A, a man, and a holla, a loser? Okay. All right, chapter 21. Don't wear your crown with your head down. Ooh, no, baby. I need you to look up so you can know exactly what direction you're going to with your crown held high. All right, on page 217, she starts off I repeatedly watched a woman. And women in my life bend over backwards and sometimes break to make it to a baby shower, cook for a birthday, give for a wedding, all in the name of what will they say if I don't do it? Ooh, I struggle with that. I wish I could say that I avoided falling into the trap, but sadly, I too am down with OPP, occasional people pleasing. For me, it's not even occasional. I was a big people pleaser in Every aspect of my life, from relationships of um, my marriage, from in the beginnings, especially, and then my parents for the jobs that I worked for. Like, what would my boss think of me if I didn't show up when I was sick, knowing I didn't need to come to work? What parents thought of me of not being a parent who was always showing up to all my kids? Like, I was the big people pleaser in the question of what. What if they say if I don't do it? All right. She also says here in her early stages of her career. Oh, college. Going to college was my biggest people pleasing, even though it still ended up being a great experience. And I absolutely adored and loved FAMU. I went to college for my parents, for my family, because in my mind, it was just like, 
you're so bright. How could you let this go to waste? People are counting on you. At the same time, it's just like, what was I, was I doing it for me? Okay. And we're going to debunk some of that selfishness of what people say is selfish. It's not really selfish. Okay. But anyway, she says early stage of my career, I would jump on a bus from New York to DC every Friday and return on Sundays just to please my parents. And I was fooling myself by thinking I was making the situation better. What I thought was a peace offer was actually a weekly declaration of war. Instead of my visit showing my parents that I will prioritize them. They were actually like scratching the scab off freshly healed wound, reminding them of my failures as a daughter all over again. She says, I was trying to be all things to everyone and becoming nothing to no one in the process. You can't serve two masters, but there I was trying to accommodate both fear and faith at the same darn time. Wow, Zers. It says, I hope it's exactly what you need to hear to start choosing yourself today. Self-sabotage isn't a badge of honor. It isn't a noble act to be celebrated. It's a slow, sad, unforgiving death of peace and joy. The world has made us feel bad for choosing ourselves, but it's time to teach kids that selfish isn't a dirty word. I'm a, and then also it says, on page 219, the kind of selfish that forces you to ask some hard qu hitting questions like, what do I want? Does this make me happy? And why am I really doing that? Wow, this had so many points for me. And I'm, I want to hit trying to be all things to everyone and becoming nothing to no one in the process. Real life, just this past Thanksgiving, I was hosting my in-laws at my home, had over 30 people at my house, and my, I, you know what, I ain't even gonna do that. I ain't even gonna do that. I'm gonna just say this, there's times where I was doing the best I could, and when people jump to conclusions, not knowing everything, would be my downfall of caring, and then I feel like I have to explain myself. And I realized, you know what, I don't even have to explain myself as long as know that I'm doing right and I did the best that I could do. That's all that matters. And I have to stop people pleasing and trying to make sure everybody is good because it's not going to happen. Because what ends up happening is I become the one that's not good. And then I'm being fake with my own darn self. So you have to think about and ask yourself these questions what do I want? Does this make me happy? And why am I really doing that? On another note to that, it doesn't bring me no peace or joy when I'm doing it for everybody else and it's not for God. That's where I had to take the hit. <laughs> it was like, oh, okay. He was like, let me handle that and you do you. Because it's nothing that you can, when somebody think you're some way, it's nothing you can say or do to make them change their mind. That's between them and God. Okay. So I'm learning to just let it go. Let it go. And this is where she goes into this on page 219 as well. This kind of stuff in it should be that's the kind of no before I even continue the reading that's the kind of selfishness we should be um, teaching our kids and ourselves doing what's best for me is not being selfish sometimes it's the person who's calling you selfish is you're not doing what they want to be done so now you're selfish so reevaluate who's calling you selfish all right Okay, so here she says, I thought that if I took care of other people, then surely someone would return the favor. But that's not how any of this works. If you're always giving, people will always be taking. So it's up to you to set the appropriate boundaries, which I've had to do several times. People have lost access to me because boundaries needed to be set to protect me and to protect them because I didn't want to be clicking off on you and you wondering what the heck did I do? And it's like, no, let me protect you and me at the same time. <laughs> she says here, if your sole purpose is to win other people's approval, then be prepared to be limited by what their approval gets you. Oh, that's a hitter. 
You know, the reality is you're trying to be relatable to the masses. It's actually preventing you from being relevant to your purpose. Come on, God. The goal isn't to be relatable. It's to be respected. Y'all, ooh, woo. Chow, 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 chow. <laughs> I remember reading, not reading, I was on social media. I curate my page a lot, so I see a lot of positive motivational speaking. And this um, speech said, you're not here to be liked. You're here to do what you come to do. That's it. We're not here to be light. We came here to do what we need to do and fulfill our purpose. And I'll, whether you like it or not, I'm going to keep it pushing. <laughs> I'm going to keep it pushing with purpose. <laughs> okay. She says here on page 220 as well. Folks will talk about you whether you're doing good, bad, or nothing at all. So you might as well do what you got to do. Um, you're going to do way big and let them deal with it. Shrinking yourself for the benefits of others is played out. Out, okay when you place greater emphasis how people perceive you you choke the potential out what makes you proverb says that your gift makes room for you that means your talent creates avenues for you to reach higher heights utilizing your gifts in your own authentic way is what separates you from an overcrowded sea of more than the same baby you are unique unique alien superstar <laughs> okay walk in that all right so also she says here on page 221, your supply is necessary. What you have to offer is a valuable, even if you don't get the validation you crave. Because let me tell you all something. No matter what you're doing, someone's not going to like it. And even what you're doing can be super huge and no one sees it. That's okay. As long as you see it and you know that it's value, that's all that matters because you're doing it for your purpose, not for validation, okay? She says here also on page 221, going into page 20, 222, you can't wear a crown with your head down and you trying to do the most is leaving you with the least and it's stripping you from your royalty. Like Maya Angelou said, your crown has already been brought and paid for. And she ends it on this last thing. She says, your presence shifts culture. Your gifts outlast generations. And your authenticity can't be denied. Go and give the people what they want. And they didn't know they needed. And that's you, boo. You'll be surprised how not. Y'all have to understand your purpose is connected to somebody else's purpose. Okay. So I need you to hurry up and move as such. Because somebody is waiting on you, boo. All right. So. That was chapter 21. Can't wear a crown with your head down. Baby, put that crown high. Okay? Wear proudful. You are your you are becoming your best you and focus on you. Be selfish about you because you being you is what the people need. Okay? <laughs> you gonna be your you gonna be a testimony to somebody. I'm trying to tell you. All right. So walk in that thing. Listen, if you're having troubles with when putting your head down and not wearing your crown high on your head, I need you to get into therapy because once you get into therapy, let me tell y'all something. It will you will expose you in therapy because they they gonna make you and they're gonna allow you to do that. And that's why I'm partnered with BetterHelp.com, the sponsor of this episode. And yes, <laughs> so you know what? So what? People gonna talk about it? You know. Therapy has become more welcoming, but it's also like people try it one time and then they have this experience of, oh, it wasn't great for me. Like, y'all, you got to give it an authentic try. Like, open up your heart and mind and expose it all. This person doesn't know you. They are there to help you. You can't go into the therapy half sharing because you're not going to be able to be fully helped. It's kind of like if you go to the doctor and they trying to help save your life, and you don't tell them you're allergic to penicillin, and that's the thing that's going to help save you. So you could be, they could be giving you something that's killing you because they don't know everything that you need to save you. The cool thing I love about BetterHelp.com is it's convenient. It's on the app, so you can schedule it no matter what time of day. They're 
and you can change your therapist on a need basis if you want to. If that person not fulfilling you anymore, you can change it. If you didn't connect with this person, you can change it. You can keep trying until you find the person for you. And also, if you found someone that helped the need, but they're not no longer satisfying it, you can change that too. And they also have financial help and assistance. So there is no excuse, y'all. Better help is literally better help. And they want to make you get better. They want to help you get better. So don't hesitate to go to the link. It'll be in the show notes as well. And that is www.betterhelp.com slash crew love. Get your 10% off your first month of therapy. Try it out. All right. All right. So you already know. And one thing going to therapy helped me become more comfortable with is chap- what she's saying. Chapter 22. Your haters going to be your elevators. And I had to become comfortable of not caring what other people think in therapy. That therapy really helped me with people pleasing. All right. On page 223, she says, you know, you're doing something right. If you're attracting opposition, the enemy ain't attacking anyone who doesn't have something valuable in their life. It says ain't, I promise. Okay. The fact that you have people coming against you should serve a barometer of your success congratulations boo you've made it you're making it okay <laughs> the boundaries you set and that people can't get with that means you're becoming who you need to become and they, they ain't used to that all right so you gotta stay strong in that thing she also says you gotta understand that you're coming up reminds folks of where they stop short it ignites and I mean, not animosity over where they currently aren't in their own lives or maybe they're just unhappy about anyone else succeeding who isn't them regardless of the reason you can't let other people's insecurity stop you from celebrating the fruits of your labor babe you are doing the work so celebrate as such okay i also saw this (laughs) this um video on ig it says success is like being pregnant Everyone says congratulations, but no, excuse my friends, y'all. Nobody knows how many times you've got fucked. I know we talking about God, but I just had to put that quote in quotes. Okay. That is a quote. Success is like being pregnant. Everyone says congratulations, but nobody knows how many times you've been effed. That is so the truth because I don't know. Well, as a woman, you know how many times some people get pregnant straight, straight off. (laughs) <laughs> straight off rip but some women it take a while to you know make a baby and so y'all don't know what the struggle been through for that bundle of joy that comes and that could be the same as your purpose and where you need to go to succeed there's so many times I have been stolen from from brokerages that say they was gonna pay me for assisting with the deal didn't get a check or do this showing I'll make sure you get this check I I've been through it I've been effed a couple of times, but I always know that how you handle me, be very careful. And I know God going to come back and take care of me. But also this business entrepreneurship, take real to off anybody entrepreneurship, even your job. It's hard to be put in a position that you're becoming or the manager or going from, I remember we had a ask advice where the girl was friends with people at a certain level. Then when she got into management, they start acting funny. They hating. Okay. Oh, oh, that's a good. Um, we're gonna touch on that too. Keep that. In, keep that in mind. Also, on page two twenty four, she says we overcome the negativity by being the ones to maintain our composure, our integrity, and our posture of faith. And this is where this is where you gotta put your big panties on. No matter what somebody does to you, do not give them the 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 satisfaction of one responding to them negatively and taking on that because all you're doing is meeting them okay i i know it's hard not to be petty but i'm just saying and keeping your integrity okay and your posture of faith okay she says here on 225 it's also important to note that not every critique classifies as hate Folks could just prefer something other than what you're offering. And that is fine. Like when people work with another realtor that I know that I spoke to them about something and they dissed me, I stopped taking it personal. What's for me will be for me. Same for you. What's for you will be for you. If God meant it, he meant it. And if he didn't, he didn't. Okay. So thank him on that perspective as well. Okay. Another perspective I'm glad that she touched on. And this is what I'll talk about with your friends. She says, 
I had a friend who grown accustomed to me being the struggling artist in a group. Our friendship made sense as long as she held financial advantage over me. It was cute for me to have hope. It was safe for her to believe in my dreams. So as long as I got with little sparks of success. But then when my life exploded, all of a sudden the narrative became I had changed. Aren't you supposed to? Since when was the goal to stay exactly the same? Ooh, I've had that experience too. Not from a necessarily friend, but I've had someone say, oh, you acting different. You're darn right, I'm acting different. I am different. I'm becoming, okay? And if it hurts you that much that I'm growing to become better, then my find the first exit. <laughs> or I will, okay? She says here, I knew what she meant. My core... I was still the same person she befriended, but the role she desired to play in my life no longer existed. So that was the end of us. Now, I don't condone leaving anyone behind all willy nilly, but I will lap you in a heartbeat if you thought for five seconds that I will play small to place in your inadequacies. Ooh, don't you do it, y'all. Don't play small to help other people feel comfortable. And she said, goodbye and God bless. Holla at your girl, okay? Also, she says on page 227, you might not realize it, but some of your opponents might be hiding in plain sight, posing as frenemies or family. Ooh, woo. And I know that's hard for some of y'all to digest. It ain't hard for me. Experience, okay? I'm trying to tell you. When your parents think you've lost it, song reassures Psalm assures that even your mother and father abandoning you, the Lord will hold you close. And I used to think this was for kids who didn't have their parents at birth. But no, your success, remember our generational parents are haven't didn't have the opportunities and I don't fault them for that. But also if they feel like they got to distance themselves or act a certain way towards you or feel like you handle other people better than you handle them, that's a them problem, not a you problem. Unless you are the problem. But you know when you are the problem. But understand, if anybody leaves you, God is for you. But in this particular instance, be careful. Your family not always for you or your friends are not always for you. But God is for you. Okay? Proverbs offers hope in a friend that sits closer than a brother. Okay? God got you covered front, back, side to side. He gonna put the people in your life to help you elevate. And that's what matters the most. All right? I love, (laughs) she also ends this um, chapter 22 on this. Story doesn't end a defeat. Folks can talk about you. They can smear your character, sabotage your efforts, even cancel you online. But they can never cancel God's plan. He'll raise you up higher and give you double for your trouble. All right, y'all. So keep on rising. God got you no matter where you're at right now. Keep going. And forget all them other folks. I saw this before I turn the page the same folks who fix their mouth to downplay your shine would be the ones God uses to prop you up so sis keep it pushing okay forget all of that other mess you focus on you all right focus on you baby let me focus (laughs) I love that song all right anyway I know that's focusing on somebody else that's the song that came to mind So whatever. All right. (laughs) Let's get into the challenge of the week. Yo, the challenge of the week comes from page 229 where you need to ask yourself the hard questions. Okay. Three, I want you to write it down. Remember, I like paper and pen because it really makes you sit in it. You turn your social media off, your devices off, and you can really focus on you. All right. The three questions, like she said in the book. One, what do I want? Okay. Two, does this make me happy? Three, why am I really doing that? And I don't want you to overthink. I want you to give you, I want you to write down the first thing that comes to mind. Because typically the first thing that comes to mind is really how you feel. So the first thing that comes to mind when you answer those questions, I need you to write that down. Keep it funky with yourself because you, you don't keep it funky with nobody else. If you don't keep it funky with yourself, you won't keep it funky with nobody else. All right. And if you don't keep it funky with yourself, how are you going to heal if you're not being honest? Remember, we talked about that when you're talking to a physician to heal you or when you're talking to your therapist to heal you. If you're not giving them all the information, they can't properly heal you. And then you walk away talking about something that ain't helped me. Well, you ain't help yourself by telling yourself 
telling them people the truth. So tell yourself the truth to help yourself. You hear me? All right. That was the challenge of the week. Ask yourself those hard questions. What do I want? Does this make me happy? And why am I really doing that? And this just came to me. Thank you, God. This is not about money. This is not what's going to make me have a lot of money. Okay? So just know, don't not consider it money. Let me tell you something. When God has a purpose for you, he will make sure all your thing, all your needs are provided for. Okay? Just I'm gonna just put that right there because I know some of y'all went to think, oh, what I need to be doing to make a lot of money. No, no, no. I want you to think about what you want without money being attached on it. What makes you happy without money being attached from it? Why am I really doing that without money being attached from it? Because that's the one thing that you probably that, not probably. That's the one thing you should be doing and the money will come with consistency. That's a whole other conversation. All right. So let's get into <laughs> what would the crew do? Ask for some advice. This was DM to me on Instagram at the crew book club. But you can also DM me on TikTok um, fan base at the crew book club as well as youtube you can drop it in the comments you can also email the crew book club at gmail.com i'm not hard to reach y'all ask your questions i'm ready for you <laughs> all right it reads you are a fellow realtor and entrepreneur so i figured you will understand most and possibly relate not sure how long you've been in real estate, but I recently quit my regular job to do real estate full time and my savings and bills would not permit me to buy Christmas gifts for my family and friends, nor do the extra things I would normally do like Christmas parties and travel. I have people asking what I want for Christmas, but I don't know how to tell them I can't afford to buy gifts this year and I feel bad accepting them if I am not getting them something. Should I still accept the gifts or? Or only buy gifts for people that get me something. Okay. I completely understand. The market is completely different for realtors. And even before, like I said on the last episode, the average realtor makes $40,000. And that's including globally, uh, national database. Okay. So your realtor friends, a lot of y'all are not making bank. And once you close the deal, you got to put 20% aside for taxes. You got to pay brokerages. So I get what you're saying. And I 100% relate. Us realtors are not walking around like the people on Sun Sunset and Bravo. We're, no, <laughs> a lot of a lot of us are not. OK, so even though they're driving a BMW and Mercedes and living in a certain. Trust me, honey, them checks, <laughs> they go quick. OK, and then we got to pay taxes. So I understand as an entrepreneur, when people be like oh, how much they make, they still have to pay people. OK, this is not easy. And financially, we got to be smart. So I understand. And also, you just quit your job. And I hope you quit with enough savings to get you at least through one year. But this is why I tell y'all, when you quit and the money that you're saving before you quit, you have to consider your lifestyle. What type of lifestyle that you want to have when you quit? OK, but it seems like you are willing to sacrifice a lifestyle because you quit. And the fact that you can recognize that this is where you're at, that's that's the good part. Now I need you to be selfish. And this is this is good. If someone gets upset with you because they brought you a gift and you didn't get it, if you can give the gift back and be like, thank you. But no, thank you, because this season, if they're I only want people to get me gifts that got it genuinely, not out of return. That's not the relationship I want. So if you have that issue, I would check that boundary that you have with that person. And I'm not saying cut them off. What I'm saying is have the conversation and say, hey, I appreciate it, but I'm not getting gifts this year. So if you get me something, please understand that I will not be giving gifts on, on return. Now, also this other note, y'all know the people who brought gifts last year were credit cards, 78%. And I, I heard this on a pod. I didn't fact check it, but I can say majority of the people who have credit card debt from Christmas gifts last year still haven't paid that debt. And because you're in a business where your credit is going to be important, I would not sacrifice getting gifts for people who brought me gifts just because. Had that conversation with them. And if they act shady after they giving you something, if you care enough, have the conversation. But honestly, 
I would just be honest with people. I think people would prefer that than you then you going down this rabbit hole of what if and what they're thinking because then you're resulting into people pleasing. So be very careful with that. But yeah, like be honest with people. Say, hey, I'm not buying gifts this year. I won't be able to go to Christmas party or travel because I'm building my business in real estate. But if you really want to give me a Christmas gift, please send and refer people over to my business as a realtor. That's what I would do. So that is my advice for what would the crew do? Ask advice. Um, congratulations to you. It's a big step. And don't hesitate to DM and reach out about this market. I don't know what market you in, but I understand. <laughs> All right. And that's for any entrepreneur. Like communicate with your family and friends. Like, hey, you want to support me or get a gift? Buy something from my business. Tell someone about my business. That'll be the best gift that you can give me. All right. That's everlasting. All right. So before we end the episode, Let's get into the quote of the week. The quote of the week comes from page 221. It says, you'll never get the full benefit of doing you if you never actually do you. All right, crew, I need you to go out into the world and do you, boo. I will holler at y'all right here next week. Hey. Want to be a part of the crew? Hit that follow button so you'll never miss an episode. And while you're at it, I would appreciate you showing crew love by rating this show on iTunes and Spotify. Don't keep all this goodness to yourself. Share and tell a friend so your whole crew can be growing with you. Let me be the first to tell you, welcome to the crew.